so um, I'm Achim I made an uh, other uh, Python module. It wasn't a time that um, PyX and it was kind of broken uh, because it used the old uh, uh, library and uh, David uh, really nicely updated it, but at the same time when it was in that state, I was working on it too and I ended up making my own module. It has a slightly different way of um, a philosophy of how you work with it, the interface is different. Um, so it uses the REST API, uh, but it tries to model the XNet actually as sort of Python native classes. So uh, it tries to abstract the REST interface out of the equation as much as possible. And to do that, it actually scans xnet.xsd, which is one of those files you saw in the practical sessions, which describe the data model. And actually, based on that, creates Python classes, uh, which are actually sort of proxies for what you see in XNet. And this limits the specific knowledge required because as you saw in a previous presentation, you need to kind of know which fields there are, which XSI types you have. I'm trying to hide that as much as possible from the user. So uh, it, m it might feel a little bit easier for people. It is although, on the other hand, it gives you slightly less control. So for example, this M multiple set won't work. Uh, so it will actually, for every single set, does something. So. Um, so it's open source, it's available to read to docs, it's still, it is quite functional already, but it's still also in a beta state and I might break it in the future if I'm not careful, so there is a little bit of a warning there, it's not nearly as stable as PyXNet. Um, so what is actually supported right now, so you can actually explore the archive, you can get and set parameters, you can work with custom variables, you can download and actually also upload data. Um, uh, you can import data via the service import. Um, and there's some exploration of the pre-archive, and you can actually uh, archive uh, sessions from that. Uh, I actually don't really create objects yet. Well, a little bit, but not very well implemented. I don't do searches. There is no um, support for the pipelines and workflows, and basically anything I didn't mention so far is probably not implemented. Uh, and something I didn't do yet, which is probably very important to do in the, in the future if people want to use it more, so I would like to have feedback, is to add some unit testing uh, and testing framework, uh, <laughs> which is uh, something you really don't want to do unless people bug you about it. Um, so I have a, I don't know how much time I have, I actually have a little Python notebook, which in, uh, shows uh, how it works. It works actually quite similar, so this is going to be live, so I hope it's all working. Uh, you know all about the curse of demo, I guess. So this is actually now making connection. It retrieved the schema from the XNOT uh, and all parsed it. If you want to know what happens, actually, there is, you can actually set your username and password. You can turn off a certificate verification. Uh, it's quite simple. So actually, if you want to, have a you want to get a project, it's, um, you actually, the session has a list of projects, and you just index the project ID that you want as you can see here, so through that, and you can actually get a, a project class back. So this, um, th so this is a project data class which actually reflects the project on the server. So if we look, uh, I actually run this before, so I made it do a random integer at the end so you can see it change. So this is the description that the server gives me. So actually here I change it by creating a new description which is basically the same description with different integer at the end, and that will set it, and actually setting the parameters just this. Um, so hopefully this now worked, and now if I would get the description again, it actually turned it into another description. So basically the setting of parameters becomes fairly easy like this, uh, which makes it very easy for new users, I think, to start with it. So you can also get a list of all the subjects, for example, in the project. So this is a sort of mapping. It looks a bit daunting maybe, but in fact it works very similar to a dictionary in Python. The only difference is actually that you have two keys to a value, and actually you can use either of the keys, so you don't have to use them both. Um, so this is basically the XNet ID, because every object in XNet has an ID, and for, for subjects this is a label. Um, and so for projects that would be a name, and for scans it would be the scan type, for example. So that's like the, the more human readable version of the ID in a lot of cases. Um, and then if you hear somewhere there is one subject with the label blast subject, so we can just select it like you would do from a dictionary, and you have a subject. Uh, so here I can show you again that the subject has some demographics, so you can get the gender or the initials out, and then the other one actually changes it around a little bit. Um, so you can see it actually changed it after the change. Uh, we changed the gender and the initials of the person, so that's does. And there's also a little thing that I actually do. I actually look at XSD, which are the allowed types, for example, and it tries as much as possible to incorporate that. So 
if I now say uh, I'm going to try to assign the gender Martian, then it will actually give me an error, and it will actually say that the gender has to be one of the following things. This is actually specified in XSD, so it's not hard-coded. So if you would take, change the data model, then actually this would automatically be picked up. Um, another thing that people are sometimes struggling with in the rest interface is uh, uh, custom variables, so a subject has custom variables. This, again, is a sort of dictionary type thing. So uh, I have one field, you can set it. Um, and this actually is reflected on the server. The only thing which is um, uh, worth noting is actually if you find a REST interface, change one of these custom variable fields, uh, it won't be reflected in the interface um, if they're not set to be displayed in the interface. So new variables won't just pop up. <coughs> they're kind of hidden. So there's an interface setting. I think it's a feature because you can just hide a lot of variables, which is sometimes nice. Um, you can also download stuff. Uh, that's a very quick example. It's actually just has like a subject has dot download there, and it will actually download the whole directory of contents. You can also do download zip. It will be this, it won't extract it. There's one important thing. Then you have to close your session because it keeps the session alive for you. So it actually sends requests every 14 minutes to count to the 50 minute timeout. And in, in Python, you have a nice context operator which you can use, so you're always sure that actually your session will be closed properly. I'm not sure how many people know that in Python, but whatever happens, as soon as this context is ended, so this scope, you go out, even if it's due to an error or an exception, it will always call the close function automatically. So I want to create new objects. I had somebody like doing it in a more Python way, so that's just by creating actually the object. Seems like a sensible choice, and I also want to do searches. Uh, and I have some, yeah, so this is the idea about that. I won't go into detail because I think we're going over time otherwise. Um, so this is a different approach of how you could make such an interface. And I've been talking to David and we are thinking to see if we can combine maybe the modules in such a way that you can uh, have both functionality uh, in a one module. But we have to see how that goes over the next couple of uh, weeks, months. So are there any questions? Is that a plausible thing that the two things can be so, so, so there's a small core which is actually very much the same. It depends on the same type of transport layer. Um, so that is fairly easy. And actually, the 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 methods we are using, like names, are actually complementary. So we don't use the same names. So actually, for the interface, we could kind of probably shift it together without too much e difficulties. But then, of course, you have to test and like integrate it a bit more, and that would obviously take time. So, so is it, do you consider the primary advantage of, of XNet Pi the, that the syntax is just a lot easier to, to work with? Yeah, a lot of the details of, of these XSI types and, and fields, yeah. you know, that the user that, that loses the web interface won't see it. I mean, if you're a programmer, you will see it, it's fine. But if you, for a lot of users, it's very difficult. And it's easy to make like a typing mistake and things. And this kind of tries to abstract it all out for you. And, right just gives you a, a very simple interface, I think. Yeah, can I ask how, how this, uh, if you develop according to this paradigm, how, how does it scale? So suppose I decide, uh, one of, so suppose one of my projects is that massive one with 12 million studies, or 12 million subjects. So as soon as I do project.subjects, what, what's going to happen, what's going to happen is my, uh, so I I've suddenly got to populate some structure that's 12 million entries uh, uh, so yes, in, in a sense that will do that. Um, it will be just asking the list of subjects, so it won't download all the subjects, but it will. No, but it'll try and get, it might try and get the list. It will, get try, it will try to get the list, yes. So that's also one of the reasons why I think, for example, the PyXNet interface would be very good to still have available. So you can actually also, in PyXNet as well, you can just actually send, there's a tiny wrapper around the, 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 the thing, so it's actually, you can do some things very similar to curl as well. Um, yeah, but it's, yeah, there is a problem when you really, really scale to large data sets that probably will break down at some point. I'm not sure what happens if you ask a listing of so many subjects. Yeah, I'm looking more at you guys because I think Python could potentially handle creating one dictionary with a million entries. It would take you memory, but the question is if the server will be happy doing it. <laughs> it sort of worry, worried me that you're, I love, I love the, uh, I love the concept. It just sort of worried me that you could do something very silly very easily by accident. You know, you just say, oh, create me the create me this this structure. Um, you, you know, I list my projects, I don't know in advance how many subjects there are. I decide I'll do project A dot subjects 
and suddenly all blaze up on me. Yeah. That's a risk. <laughs> I have to admit that. <laughs> so, any other questions? Yeah, no, I guess the next speaker. Uh, next speaker, James Nixon. Thank you. Thank you.